Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where two old guys are going to be talking about vintage films and television shows. Yeah, and in particular, the George Gobel show. Hard to guess, huh? Based on that big screen. What a hint, what a hint. <laughs> you know, um, Art and I love to browse the Vintage Film Channel, vintagefilmchannel.com, as well as uh, YouTube slash Vintage Film Channel. And we come across all kinds of uh, movies and TV shows we haven't seen. We come across a lot of stuff that we have seen. Mm. And George Goebel's show really stuck out at me because I remembered uh, it. And, it, you know, I didn't think it was a big hit. Uh, it's my memory. But I remember watching it all the time with my parents. Mm. And I remember George Goebel was this kind of nebbish character who was very funny but very dry. Mm. Midwestern, dry Midwestern humor. And I, I believe, Art, you may know better, it, he was the first on television to do that kind of laid-back humor. Yeah, well, I mean, there there were others that, that uh, were in that style, such as uh, uh, Jack Benny and uh, even Johnny Carson, quite frankly. Uh, I think the two of them had, had uh, similar uh, sensibilities. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, and Carson made a big deal about being from the Midwest originally. Right. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I'm going to just, uh, um, uh, let's see if I can get this thing going in the background over just here. Just hit play, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So George Goble, anyway, what he did is he had a variety show. I don't really know the history of where he came from or how he got his show. Right. Um, but he had a variety show, and it was pretty typical in the sense that he'd do a stand-up the, the episode that's on Vintage Film Channel, the one we're watching uh, now, watched and are watching, um, was the first episode of the of the series. Mm. So in this particular episode, and, and Grace has not, uh, I don't think she has more than one episode up there, uh, but I'm sure George Goebel's show is available on the internet because it was a very popular show. At any rate, this episode being the first episode, he does a lot of explanation. We're going to do this in our show. We're not going to do that in our right. show. And it's all laced with very funny word humor, you know. And they, he does, it's a typical variety show in the sense that, you know, there's a couple of famous stars that appear. I think Fred McMurray right. uh, appears in this episode. Um, they do some skits. Uh, he's got a couple of character actors that are part of his or will be part of his regular team doing skits every week. Uh, I'm sure they had a musical number. Um, it, it, this particular episode is only a half hour. Um, I don't know if it got truncated or if, you know, maybe the show was an hour, uh, but dial soap, don't you love it? Dial shampoo. Yeah, remember, remember a lot of the shows in the early fifties uh, uh, had a, uh, a sponsor that was integrated into the show. Palmolive, oh, yeah. Palmolive, uh, all sorts of uh, Colgate. Uh, yes. A lot of them own something. But also, um, uh, you were talking about um, uh, his sort of... He was sort of like... Uh, there was a Milton Berle and um, a, uh, the show of shows. They were all sort of more ruckus. And this yeah. was like totally laid back. As a matter of fact, I think he, he created a moniker for himself of Lonesome George. Yeah, uh, it's like this Basset Hound kind of that. Kind of, that sounds very familiar. Um, yeah. It's interesting because when I saw the name, I said, "No kidding, George Goble," and yet I really didn't remember uh, a whole lot about him. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see why, because he makes himself to be such a plain, average guy, uh, and all the humor flows from that. And it's they, it is a funny show. I have but, to tell you. By, by the way, he's he's the kind of guy like like all these shows for me. What they do is, uh, even this fact that there's only a one off here, I watch this one, and then uh, I hope that's somebody saying that uh, they're buying our show for $2 million. And, yeah, uh, I, they wanted, they wanted my that. address. They wanted my address so they could send uh, half the money directly to me. Yeah, I'm only popular when when uh, when we're recording. Right. Sorry. <laughs> and, and so in, in any event, so uh, like all these shows, uh, the name triggers some nostalgic sense for us. Yeah. But uh, then I tend to go take a look at, like, back on he married his childhood sweetheart, and he was married to her for his entire life, like a high school sweetheart. 
Uh, also, uh, I, rem I remember George Gobel, not so much from the show, although I know that I remember seeing it, but I remember that he was a, sort of like a regular guest on Johnny Carson, who's another laid back, laconic uh, kind of well, guy. He Forget Johnny Carson. He was on Hollywood Squares. Right. Well, forever. With Paul yeah. Lind. You know, he was, he was the original Paul Lind. I don't think yes. they had them both on at the same time. Uh, maybe they did. but I don't uh, know. But he, it, it, the thing is, on Hollywood Squares, of course, you had to be a really inventive comedian. Mm -hmm. Even though they had writers who would feed you answers. They, everybody knew the questions. You, could, you would be fed a, a bunch of funny answers. They still needed uh, personalities, and they needed um, uh, comedians who could think on their feet. So uh, he mm -hmm. was a, he was a comedian. He was very funny. It was a laid back, dry humor. You have to watch it uh, to see really what made him unique. Um, but I thought it was fun. It was fun to watch the show again. Yeah, I agree. And he had, by the way, over his uh, uh, six or seven year run as a variety show. Uh, for which I think he won an Emmy uh, huh. along the way, or maybe several of them. Uh, he had all these very big name stars who came yeah. to his show. Uh, you know, one of the things he never did is he never upstaged anybody. Uh, that's the, uh, I think, was something that about him that was sort of endearing, is that yeah. he always tried to make the other person look good, uh, even yeah. at his own expense. So he was just a nice guy. Uh, with uh, Smothers Brothers kind of dumb humor. Uh... Yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, analogy. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things I noticed in this show is that the stars, Fred McMurray in particular, really joined into his kind of humor. They became like mm -hmm. a next door neighbor, which was George Goebel's whole thing. I'm just the average guy right. bumbling around through life. Um, and I thought to myself, that's an endearing way to present, you know, Fred McMurray, who we've seen a million times and watched right. in movies. So I, I think the show was successful for that reason, as they took George Goebel's sense of humor and applied it to everything. Right. Who knows? Anyway, anyway it, it was fun. And that's what that's what the real fun of Vintage Film Channel is for us, is that it's always giving us some snippet of something of uh, a really warm yep. or memorable time in our lives when, you know, uh, and I don't know, you know, maybe we always like to look back at the simpler times uh, yeah. and maybe they weren't as simple as we would like to remember, but we've forgotten some of the rough edges, but this is one of the kind of things that we sort of remember of the good old days. Yeah. Yeah. See you. See you soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.